My guys are not really one to talk about Morse keys, having never practiced sending in my life, but someone might want to see the unboxing video of a Vibraplex straight key with some accessories. Vibraplex claim to be the oldest amateur radio company in existence today at over 100 years old, so hopefully they know how to make a decent product. As you can already see, it's a variable speed unboxing to keep the boring bits short and the overall video tight. So this first item is an optional transceiver cable, of which there are several varieties, none of which are correct for my transceiver, which requires a stereo 6.5mm jack. Uh, if you plug in the mono jack, it'll simply hold the key down all the time. And this one is a dust cover, which looks to be just made of uh, laser cut acrylic glued back together with solvent. The dust cover is an optional accessory, it doesn't come with the key, and unfortunately this one has a less than perfect finish. It already has those micro scratches on the top that you get from cleaning it sometimes, and or some grime already present right on the top. So a little bit disappointing because I could do better. Uh, just assemble the thing with the protective film present and peel it off when the job's done. So warranty information with instructions on returning the unit to the manufacturer and a complete parts list which is interesting. I wonder if you could buy all the parts and assemble the thing and how much that would cost. On the back here all of the parts are labelled so you could view this as assembly instructions. Interesting. The key itself had some specs of stuff probably from the packaging but it was in very good condition. As I said earlier, no experience in Morse sending here, no practice at all. My only memory of what a Morse key should feel like is in using one, just playing with one really, when I was buying a vintage radio from someone's house and uh, just have a vague memory of remembering the feel and remembering that's what a Morse key should feel like. Um, so that's really the only history that I have. I was actually after that Morse key but it got sold without my knowledge. Even if the transceiver cable was correct for my transceiver, I still think this would be pretty lame to buy considering the quality. The wire is really thin, the lugs are nothing special, and I'd need to replace the plug for my transceiver anyway, so I thought oh, I can make a cable of higher quality overall for the same money. So uh, considering the components that I'll have left over after this, and the extra wire that I'll have left over, yeah I have made a much higher quality cable overall for exactly the same money. Much more durable looking and I've brought these components at a retail outlet also so I didn't save any money buying anywhere special. The code practice oscillator for $29.95 US, ridiculous, I can do much better for much cheaper. The product is just a circuit board with cabling so anything I make is going to be comparable. I've got plans for something better, but to whip it up quickly, I've just used a 555 timer, 6.5mm stereo jack for the key, uh, to use the same cable that I made, soldered in batteries, because this will be obsolete by the time they're flat, the unit has no power switch, because the Morse key is the power switch, and I've rounded off the square wave produced by the 555 with an LC circuit, and uh, that will produce something closer to a sine wave. That doesn't sound very sinusoidal. Well, the LC circuit is only connected when a speaker is connected to the unit. For the piezo, that's more suited to the TENS Morse project. I didn't really calculate, but I'd hazard a guess that the Morse practice oscillator pictured here is actually about half the price as if you'd bought one from Vibraplex. So next it's to be seen if the TENS Morse project works, and if not, why not? 
It's probably time to see how the TENS unit goes. And I really don't know at this stage. Um, really, this was all done in a day. I received the key in the morning, drove and got parts for the cable in the afternoon, and then made the sounder uh, at night. So uh, here we go with the two connected together. And it's a mess. The green LED on the TENS unit should flash roughly in time with the yellow LED on the Morse practice oscillator which aren't directly connected together. But that's not happening. But it will. So it works fine using my thumb to key and I imagine to get my index and forefinger working with the key with the same convincing outcome as my thumb, it should only be a matter of adjusting the duty cycle that the TENS unit uses to modulate the Morse signal. I've been using this setting so far because it's the highest comfortable power level so I'm going to have to get into the discomfort uh, electrocuting my arm <laughs> but I'll only do that a few times. This was all done without any adjustment to the key since I've received it either so yeah I think I can probably get away without an extra channel to lift my wrist. Okay, to alleviate my anxiety over getting painfully electrocuted, I've implemented some code to gradually increment the duty cycle, let's call that power, from 20%, which is what I've shown you so far, to 25, 30, 40, and then 50, which is quite painful, and I've only been subjected to that setting once when I was building the circuit. So it's almost there. There's a couple of sloppy bits in that. Although I have adjusted duty cycle, I haven't yet adjusted the frequency that the Morse signal is modulated at. So I could see what effect that has. There was more to the video, pushing more current through my arm to try to perfect this uh, technique with my four finger and index finger. I uploaded it to YouTube, it got viewed six times and I deleted it because I've been showing segments to some people who practice Morse code over Facebook Messenger and uh, I've been going for the wrong technique, uh, leaving my thumb on the desk and using only my forefinger and index finger and who would have thought the most natural way to, uh, for your muscles to, to practice Morse code is the correct way so your thumb actually does go on the button and uh, that makes everything easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm quite sure everything's fine now because uh, that was almost perfect with the lowest power setting. I've deleted quite a bit of footage from this version of the video because uh, I would have really started back from here and just adjusted my uh, forefinger and index finger slightly to put them on top of the key. And although most of the force will be coming from my thumb, that won't necessarily be visible. Uh, the motion should really come from your forearm. Anyway, <laughs> that's all for now. Catch you next time. Next time we'll have a look at uh, the software and I'll try to upload the actual prank if I can and if I get away with it.